Hello readers, welcome to Purple Pebble. Today I'm going to read Badger's Bad Mood by Hywin Aram and illustrated by Susan Worley. So let's enjoy. Beth had been to deliver Badger's mail and now he brought news. Badger was in a bad mood. But Badger's never in a bad mood, said Field Mouse. He is now, said Beth. He just sits there staring. Speak to him, he almost snaps your head off. I'll go and see him, said Mole. I'll go with you, said Squirrel. So Mole, Squirrel and Rabbit went to see Badger. He was sitting in his chair in the gloom, his face like a dark cloud. Now, now, Badger, fussed Squirrel. This won't do at all, she switched on a light. Turn that off, snapped Badger, and leave me be. Squirrel and Rabbit were most offended. They scurried away, turning to themselves. Mole hung around in the shadows. He felt very sad. Without Badger in a good mood, everything seemed wrong. He rattled some cups, cleared his throat, and opened and closed a cupboard. You still there, Mole? Yes, yes, I'm still here. Badger heaved around in his chair. I'm sorry about this. Spect I'll get over it. But right now, I'm just no good, you know? No good for anything. Don't worry, said Mole worriedly. We'll just wait. But waiting for Badger to get over his bad mood wasn't that easy. The animals were very impatient. He was going to help me choose a holiday, said Bat, waving his holiday brochures. Perhaps we should get him some ginger ale, said Rabbit. And some puzzles to take his mind off things said Squirrel. Well, take him something, said Rat. We're supposed to be going fishing today. I have a doctor friend staying, said Stout. I'll take her over. She'll fix him up. Badger, however, was having none of it. Close the curtains, he begged Mole. Keep them away. Mole stood guard at the door. I'm sorry, but he's not seeing anyone. Well, we can't wait forever, said Frog. Make him see reason, Molly. Snap him out of it, said Weasel. I'll see what I can do, said Mole. When they had all gone away, Mole watched Badger staring and dozing and turning heavily in his chair. He remembered his words, no good for anything. Then he crept over to Badger's desk and very quietly borrowed some paper and pens and pencils. The next morning, a poster appeared, pinned to a tree in the clearing. It said, Award Ceremony. Tomorrow night in this clearing, awards will be presented for everything. Presenter, Stout's friend, the doctor. Master of Ceremonies, Small. Afterwards, there will be juices and cakes, music and dancing. Dress your best. Everyone got excited. I'm bound to win the Fairy Cake Award, said Squirrel. Maybe I'll win the Slow Dancing, said Miss Snail. They spent the rest of the day wondering who was going to win what for what and working on what they were going to wear. Meanwhile, Mole went to see Badger. You'll have to come, of course. A little bit tells me you may be getting something. Badger's eyes moved sharply for the first time in days. Really? His voice had some edge to it. Some color. Suppose my tuxedo needs a press. You wouldn't help me with that, would you, Mole? Mole helped Badger press his suit and waistcoat. Then he ran home to press his own. Not to mention prepare some speeches, write out certificates, order the juice and cakes, book the musicians and set up the clearing. Whose idea was this anyway? He kept saying to himself, I'll never be ready. But somehow by the time everyone started arriving for the ceremony, he was ready. He shot Stott's doctor friend to the platform. Then, out of the corner of his eye, he saw Badger slipping in at the back. Well, that's a relief, he sighed. Excuse me, said the doctor. Nothing, said Mole. Let's begin. The first award did go to Squirrel for fairy cakes. And Miss Snail did win for slow dancing. Frog won for best hopping and most gallant courting. Stout won for swimming, Weasel for wiliness, Field Mouse for scurrying, 
hedgehog for eating the most potato chips at one sitting. Rat for reading, rabbit for first aid, and bat for most musical accordion playing. And now, announced Mall, we come to the luck section. He cleared his throat. <clears throat> the award for always knowing the best way through the woods goes to... There was an expectant hush. Badger! The clapping and cheering was deafening. When it had died down, Mole cleared his thought again. <coughs> and to save yourself a trip back to your seat, the award for always knowing what to do in a crisis, Badger! Mole waited for the applause to fade. And the award for always being there for others, Badger! The award for most needed and depended on, Badger. And finally, the award for most loved, whatever his mood, Badger. The crowd rose, clapping and calling, Bravo! Badger blushed and bowed and bowed and blushed and fumbled with all his certificates. Oh my, oh my, he whispered to Mole. This is too much. No more than you deserve, said Mole. Tell me, said Badger, as he and Mole took a moment together after the ceremony. Whose idea was all this? Mole blinked slowly. Mm, mm, uh, I... Well, said Badger, whoever it was deserves a medal. Two medals. Because, you know, now and again everyone needs to hear how much they're loved, said Mole. And appreciate it, bowed Badger. You said it, sighed Mole, giving Badger a hug. Then he stepped onto the dance floor and made his happiest announcement yet. Okay, everyone, Badger's back. Let's dance. The end. So what do you learn in this story? You learn that everyone needs to hear how much they are loved and appreciated. So keep that in mind. Be sure to like and subscribe and buy a copy for your home library to support the authors and publishers of this amazing book. Thank you.